What screams? I'm way richer than I look. Unique or somewhat odd collections of things most people don't collect. I worked in a high-end whiskey store for many years, and the number of shabbily dressed men from overseas who strode in to spend $5,000 to $10,000 on whiskey for their collection was staggering. They were always chatty knowledgeable, and above all casual. One man in particular had been collecting for decades, his wife was fully supportive, and he enjoyed traveling the world to pick them up as an excuse to go someplace. Conversations often went like this customer, I see from your website you have the Do you have any in stock now? Me? We do, yes. It's downstairs. In fact we have a few of that vintage, as well as the Would you like to know the prices? Customer, oh, great. I think that fills a couple of gaps in my collection. And if not the guys and my wife will enjoy cracking one open. Can you package them up for me please? Me? Would. Would you like to know how much they are, sir? Customer, can you ship them all to my place? In fact, if you have discounts for bulk items, I'd like to know what other vintages you have. And so on. That sounds awesome. I'd love to be able to do that one day. It certainly has stood out for me, even all these years later. I work at a luxury resort. People call to book rooms with me all day and they aren't cheap. I can tell when it's obvious a young couple who had to scrape together the dough for the cheapest room. But every once in a while I'll get a call from someone who casually calls and asks to book the biggest room without asking for the price. They know exactly what they want and the price means nothing to them. 5k a night? No biggie. Here is my card number. When you said a young couple who had to scrape. I felt that. Making less doesn't mean you can't ever have fun, you just have to do it less often. On the night I proposed to my wife we spent $250 on dinner and I paid for part of it with a $25 gift card my aunt sent me for my birthday two months ago. I went to dinner with a GF and her parents. After we ate the owner came out and asked how the meal was and then we left without a bill ever coming to the table. On the way home I asked GF about it and she said her dad had tabs at all the restaurants he liked to eat at. As we were leaving the valet brought the cars around and I mentioned I liked his Tahoe. I asked what year it was and he kind of laughed and said whatever is the newest one. I didn't know he owned a car dealership in another city. And GT, after we ate the owner. That's real wealth right there. They avoid any discussion of money. When paying for anything they like to do it privately, quietly, before anyone else is aware, so you end up walking in and out of places feeling like you haven't paid, almost as if money doesn't exist. They don't flaunt it? Source, I was dating a girl and didn't realize she and her whole family were rich until your dad picked us up for dinner in a brand new Mercedes, proceeded to pay for everything during our trip, and our Christmas presents were first class flights to the US for a ski holiday. That's around AUD $10.15k per person. He also financially supports his other daughter at Cornell University, living in the US. I grew up poor. But I never realized how poor until I met that family. Oh god. I dated a rich girl in high school but didn't realize it until it was time to meet her dad. She had me meet them at a restaurant that there was absolutely no way I could have afforded the tip, let alone my meal. It was awkward assuming I wasn't going to pay anything when the check came. Yeah, that was my experience as well. No one else cared, but I was always uncomfortable with the expectation that everything would be paid for me. I used to but I make sure I do the same for others so instead of feeling uncomfortable, I learned to be grateful. I represented a guy who was is rich. I mean as in filthy. Owns buildings plural in Manhattan. I was in house counsel to his company. So one day he comes to my office and tells me he needs me to go to a meeting with him cross town and about 30 blocks north. He tells me wait he has to get the car. So I am standing on the street and he pulls up in the company van that his employee used for building maintenance, to carry stuff to renovate spaces for new tenants, etc. It's pretty crappy. On the way I asked him why he was driving this all things considered why the van. He said obviously he could drive or take a cab but why bother. In Manhattan most spaces in Midtown on down are parking for commercial vehicles only, and parking a car can be pricey. The van had commercial plates, so he could pretty much park in front of wherever he was going. Why waste money on a cab or parking a car? Couldn't argue with that. We parked right in front of the building. 
There's a prominent airline executive in Ireland who infamously bought a taxi license for his personal driver for similar reasons. The now-dead founder of Use, Lars Larsen, was infamous for this behavior. Whenever his management team went on business trips, he would only allow them to fly coach, and there is a legend that he called one directly to ask why they ordered extra size at a business meeting. On top of that, right up until his death he refused his children any part of managing the company, insisting on competence only. At the time of his death his net worth was reportedly $5 billion. If he wasn't famous, no one would ever suspect him being the 400th richest man in the world. His entire demeanor and humility was the exact opposite of what people normally associate with extreme wealth. Edit, I didn't want to mess up the original text, so here's some bonus facts. He always shared hotel rooms with his employees to save cost. The only flying coach thing included himself, and they always sat at the back of the plane, citing, it takes the same amount of time to get there, whether you pay 1000 or 5000 and GT. On top of that, right up until his death he refused his children any part of managing the company, insisting on competence only. That's why he was rich. When asked about their income they respond with, I am comfortable, without elaborating. Flashing money will leave you in a lonely place. If you have a few dollars, you don't want to make others feel strange. If you flash it, then they don't want to talk about their problems because it feels more embarrassing. And you can't talk about yours because now you're just whining as if money in the bank is the solution to all of our problems. It's just the solution to one problem. Money can be pretty isolating and this is why some rich people only hang out with other rich people. But not all rich people are very interesting. I'm a worker bee in the tech sector. I make decent money, but still less than doctors or whatever. That makes me comfortable. But many of my friends aren't in that position. So I'll do stuff like pick up the check if we go out to dinner. But talking about money is just a way to create a gulf between us. The other thing is discovering as you make more money just how little it all still is. I remember making 25k a year on thinking the 80k per year people were living large. Because it would amount to all these extra hundreds of dollars a week and you could save and buy a house and afford a car and go on vacations. And as I climbed that ladder to that place, yes, I bought a house, but it's a pretty low-tier condo. Yes, I got a car, but it's used and though, solid, not luxurious in any way. Yes, I go on vacations, but they're not international, and usually, wasted, just flying home to see my mother. It's really awakened me to realizing just how high the poverty line reaches, and where the real, middle-class brackets truly are, and how little that really gets you. Somewhere someone said to say, not enough when asked how much money they earn, and I can't see that being anything but the truest. The type that nonchalantly offers you a spot in their luxury box at a game or concert, or covers your course fees at a golf outing even though you barely know them. Knew a gentleman that lived fairly modest. One time mentioned I was looking forward to going to a NBA game for the local team. He said, oh that's nice, if you stop by the office I give you some better seats. I didn't think much of it but did need to go by the office for work. Checked in at the front. Hey I am so and so and here to see boss. Oh hello I have your courtside tickets and he will be down in a few to sign your form. She handed me five courtside seats. He had them for every game in case here a customer wanted to go. It's actually super common for box courtside seats to be owned by a company that allows use for upper management or sales. It's generally for schmoozing but occasionally someone will bring their family. Source, arena, stadium bartending for years. Yep was invited to a box viewing of an NBA game because company meeting got cancelled and they didn't want the tickets to be wasted. Being unimpressed by rich people asterisk 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 asterisk. Guess I'm rich then. Richer than you look? Well on a bad day I look like a hobo so not setting the bar very high there lol brands that are so expensive that us poor people haven't heard them. That's how I've seen my tools as of late. When I first started working, I would buy the cheapest brand of tools just to have them. I worked for guys that owned really nice tools that they had bought 10 to 15 years before and still used them. I saw one called Field Peace and asked how much you paid for the multimeter. He bought his for $240 and had a lifetime service warranty on them. Within a couple of months mine stopped working. There's a reason why people spend thousands on their tools. 
I'm a controls engineer and learned very quickly to never skimp on tools. There is nothing worse than being on site street a customer and having a very specific tool break that takes a, a day or two to get a replacement shipped to UBC no stores out in the middle of nowhere, sell them. Does help that my company understands this and doesn't blink an eye when I put a few thousand dollar order in for tools. When it comes to precision stuff I have a sort of flowchart that comes in handy. Does it move and measure? Buy a good brand used. Does it not move but still measures? Buy a new QC to Chinese import and inspect it with the previously bought good stuff. Just a block of material? Cheapest you can find or make it. Back in high school I used to do rowing, and at the rowing club there was this guy who wasn't great at socializing, was a little awkward, but he was friendly so I didn't mind him. We often went out on the same boats and would talk to each other, and at the end his dad would always pick him up afterwards wearing sweatpants, slippers and a hoodie. You might understand why, then, I didn't believe my friend when he told me that they were one of the richest families in the world. I looked them up, and sure enough there they were, worth an estimated 15. $5 billion. Now whenever I see someone out in public looking like they're wearing what they slept in I always assume they're mega rich and don't care about a thing anymore. For a really rich? Is a fun game to play. Let's play American's favorite game well off for welfare. From the makers of Homeless or Hipster. Let's not forget their first show Proletarian or Patrician. Wearing a t-shirt and jeans in a room of people wearing suits. My company CEO does this all the time. I recently went to get a car wash. I sat next to and talked to a guy who was wearing Crocs and sweats. His clothes looked new, just not expensive. He got into a newer model Porsche Panamera. That guy was rich? Or a valet? Or a car thief? Not knowing prices for common household items, foods, 